Hello, and welcome to our service to the Church Without Walls, streamed on behalf of All Saints Stockbrook and St. Stephen's Borowash. It's lovely to be able to connect with you wherever you are. Thank you for joining us. Firstly, a big congratulations to Hannah and Andrew, who had their wedding last Saturday. Our thoughts and prayers are with you and your families at this time. And let's begin with the prayer for today. Let us pray. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus tells the parable of the vineyard workers. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and send them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came, and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for Denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who is hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's pray for a moment. Father, we pray now that by your spirit, you will come to us and open our hearts and minds to all that you long to teach us from your word. Come, Lord, we pray. Amen. Last week, Jeff talked about stories, stories in the Bible, especially the stories Jesus told, the parables as we often call them. He said that some had a clear message, like the one he was using himself, the unmerciful servant, whereas others were unclear, and I think the words he used were dense or opaque. Jesus himself said that he spoke in parables so that only those whose hearts were open to his message could understand them. Certainly, today's reading, the story of the labourers in the vineyard, is one of the less clear ones. In some ways, you may not so much seek to understand it as to react to it. The labourers who toiled all day for the same wage as those who were hired later reacted themselves by saying, that's not fair. And that may well be the reaction of many of us too. But Jesus' stories are always to show us what God's like and what life in his kingdom is all about. With that in mind, we look at this story and see that the landowner, the master, 
is of course God himself. He is, if you like, the supreme landowner, the owner of all that is. This world, everything in it, belongs to him. With that in mind, as we seek to understand this story, our starting point has to be that the land, what the landowner does is right and just and fair. He says to the complaining workers, I have given you what we agreed. That I seem more generous to others shouldn't bother you. Perhaps we can look at it from the point of view of people who've been in the church for many years. And of course, I'm one of those. People who've been faithful in church attendance, as far as they can, they've lived good moral lives, they've been generous and charitable in giving to those in need, and so on. And then there are others who come to faith later, for perhaps from self-indulgent, immoral lives, even criminal lives. They've given little thought to others, and they've often used and exploited them. And God receives them and welcomes them, forgives them and loves them every bit as much as he does those who've been his faithful servants for a long time. The reason for this is that God has only one thing to give, just as the landowner had only one wage to give. And what God has to give every person whenever they come to him is grace, the free gift of life, forgiveness and freedom from sin. There's an acronym sometimes used that I think explains grace so well. It's this, God's riches at Christ's expense. The first labourers thought they'd earn more pay and those who were hired later. In a sense, they wanted more of the landowner's riches than they'd earned. But they'd had other benefits. By being chosen at the beginning of the day, they'd had the certainty of a wage at the end of it. They'd had gainful employment. Probably some of the later workers would have preferred not to have spent nearly the whole day in idleness with the anxiety that they'd be unable to feed their families at the end of it. Giving back to those who've been faithful Christian, going back to those who've been faithful Christians all their lives, they have had the incredible benefit of knowing God's love in their lives for so long. God's riches at Christ's expense all the blessings of peace and hope and fulfilment that that brings. There's a remarkable family living not far from here in Nottingham. And I'm sure some of you will have heard of the Canny Masons. And here they are. They're a family of seven children, all of whom have incredible musical gifts. The best known of them is Sheku. He's a cellist and he played at the Royal Wedding two years ago. He was the first black musician to win the Young Musician of the Year Award in 2016. He's played at the proms. Uh, last year he played El Elgar's Cello Concerto and this year he played some cello sonatas with his sister Isata who is actually the eldest of those whole gifted family and she herself is a wonderfully gifted pianist. There's an older brother who's a violinist and all the others are developing them gifts. But it's Sheku who stands out. Their mother, a remarkable woman indeed, coping with them all and enabling them, each of them to fulfil their potential, says what's different about him. She says when he's doing schoolwork or playing football, he's just like any other boy. But when he plays music, when he plays the cello, he goes into a different world. 
It's as if he becomes a different person. And she said, that is very special. And when you see him and hear him playing, you can see that specialness. But none of his siblings is envious of him. They're all incredibly supportive of one another. Their father says that when Sheku received his award for the Young Musician of the Year, it was as if all of them had. And that's another kind of grace, really. All of them are valued by their remarkable parents. None feels they receive less than Sheku. We all have the most remarkable parent of all, our Heavenly Father. We've all been given gifts, but it's easy to think about the things we haven't got things we wish were different, maybe things we've missed out on, things we've lost. But God has made a promise to each one of us. In the book of Joel, it's this, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. You will have plenty to eat until you are full. We can look back over the years and maybe wonder how life might have been different in our own upbringing, maybe in the way we brought up our own families. And I found recently that God's doing something quite profound in my life. He's taken me back to look at times in my early adult life when things could have gone one way or the other, a kind of sliding doors experience. I'm not sure what it's all about or what it's leading to at the moment. I only know a great sense of God's presence and his peace with me. He walks back with us into the past. He stays with us in the present. And somewhere in the future, he will repay us for anything we may have missed or lost. If we trust God's incredible generosity, we'll receive from him all we could ever want. And we can look back and rejoice in his generosity to everyone else. We all receive God's riches at Christ's expense. And we don't deserve or earn any of it. As we come to a close now, I'm going to pray a song. And it's all about grace. The words will come up because they may not be very distinct in the recording. But let's just pause a moment now and consider God's grace and all it means to us. Amen. Just as I am, you accept us all. 
It feels good when we're together. It feels right when we belong. It feels right when we're united. Hey, Pixie, look, it's Buzz. Shall we invite him to dance with us? I've heard he's good. Oh, I don't know, Trixie. Why not? Well, my friends say he's a bit weird. Weird? In what way? Well, he looks so different to start with. I mean, look at those stripes. He doesn't even talk. I mean, he's so different to us. But I thought he was your friend. Yeah, but everyone says I shouldn't play with him. Oh, Trixie, I don't know what to do. Well, maybe our Bible story today might help. Ooh, who's it about? It's about David. Oh, I love David. He went and took on that giant Goliath. hi -ya! Yes, well, thanks for that. But do you know what happened after that? Um, no, I don't think I do. Well, let's take a look. The story of David and Jonathan, adapted from 1 Samuel 18 through to 20. You may need to dig in the Old Testament to find it. David, who was just a boy from a sheep farming family, had fought Goliath and won. Afterwards, David was directed to live at King Saul's house. Saul had a son named Jonathan. Jonathan was likely several years older than David, but they quickly became friends and likely spent a lot of time together. Jonathan made sure David felt at home in Saul's palace. As a sign of his friendship, Jonathan gave David some things that were really important to him. His coat, his sword, his bow and his belt. 
Several times, David and Jonathan made a promise to each other to stay friends no matter what and care for each other. King Saul became jealous of David's success and the promise from the prophet that David would become king. So Saul tried to kill David on several occasions. Jonathan managed to save David and look after him by speaking well of him to his father and then hiding him from Saul when it was needed. Jonathan accepted God's plan that David would be king and not him and their friendship strengthened over the years. Because Jonathan and David's friendship remained true, God's plan for David to become king was made possible. Oh, wow! Jonathan and David were really good friends. Yes, and yet they grew up in different backgrounds and John's dad didn't want them to be friends at all. But in Proverbs in the Bible, it says, A friend loves at all times. And I think David and Jonathan's friendship really showed that. Oh, Trixie, I've been so silly, as is my friend. It doesn't matter that he is different. In fact, I like his differences, really. And we still have so much in common, just like David and Jonathan. So, what shall we do? Hey, Buzz, do you want to dance? <gasps> Great! OK, one, two, three, four. It feels good when we're together. It feels good when we belong. It feels right when we're united. No divide, living life as one. Yeah! Bye! Woo! Good morning. So let us pray. We focus our prayers today on our local community, but not forgetting the troubles and the turbulence throughout the world losses and the fears and the unknown of the future. So picturing our local world, Lord, we pray especially for the elderly, the lonely, the frightened people in, their commu in this community. Covid is especially affecting vulnerable people so many different ways. We become worried and frightened to venture out of the house. They become depressed by the ongoing and seemingly endless nature of this pandemic. So we pray that Lord will give them comfort and hope for the future. We pray for the unemployed, for those facing redundancy in the near future the effects on their family and friends. And we pray that our efforts from our churches, our friends and families, all designed to support those needing help at this time, be it through our neighbourhood scheme, our food bank, or just neighbourliness. Please bless all that we try to do and may it be successful and helpful to all those we know need this help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our churches and also for our schools, thinking particularly of young people. We pray that schools will remain infection free and our young people will not be vilified as causing this recent growth in the number of infections 
infecting people and leading to lockdowns in local areas. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves, for our family and friends, all those in need of special prayer at this time, those who are ill, particularly, for whatever reason, and those needing your healing touch. We pray for those lonely people who need comfort and hope for the future. So all those known to us, we offer up to you, Lord. And so in a moment of silence, bring people to your own mind who you know particularly need God's love at this time. So please, Lord, hear our prayers. We ask for your blessing on this church and this community. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
is finished. I will not post in anything, no gifts, no path, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, his wounds have played my ransom. Well, in a few moments, this service will end with a prayer for blessing. However, a few notices beforehand, though. These services will continue to be streamed every Sunday at 10 o'clock. But if you can think we can improve these services or some new ideas, please let us know. The web address for the church will be on the screen at the end, and this will contain a place where you can access the monthly news sheet, which shows what actual services and meetings are occurring in church buildings. Alternatively, if you'd like to request prayers for yourself or family or friends, our prayer email address will be shown on the screen as well. Please continue to support and pray for our food bank, which is very much in need, which again the relevant information will be shown at the end of the service. So until we meet again, I pray that you, your family, your loved ones are kept safe and well. And now a prayer for blessing. May our days be filled with laughter, joy and friendship. May our journeys be transformed by this salvation story. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, upon those you love and forevermore. Amen.